In this video, I'm going to talk about the importance of postprandial sugars. Postprandial sugars are sugars uh, after you eat. The two general types of sugars that we can talk about in the body. We'll go back to this curve that we've used before. Let's say this is the sugars in the morning and after breakfast, after lunch, and after dinner it spikes up. You can talk about the general sugars here, which are the background sugars. We'll call them, we'll call them background sugars. And this is when you have your meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And we'll call these sugars the after meal sugars or postprandial And when you uh, get to a hemoglobin A1C, when you have a hemoglobin A1C that's the three-month sugar average, that's over about 8 to 9%, most of the contribution, a majority of the contribution to the sugar highness when you have diabetes is from the background sugars. But when the sugars get into a better range, and let's just say generally below 8%, most of the sugar highness comes from the postprandial sugars. So when we're trying to get the A1C down, and let's say the hemoglobin A1C is in the 7s, 7, 7.6, 7, 7, 7.2, anything below 8 really, sometimes the most effective attack point to go after, to lower the sugars, is to go after these postprandial spikes. Uh, now, there are a number of different ways that you can go after these postprandial spikes. So here again is our curve. And of course you can go after it with uh, diet. Exercise generally lowers all the sugars by cutting down insulin resistance. It doesn't really go so much right after the after meal spikes. but with dietary therapy, you can knock down the after-meal spikes by decreasing the amount of carbohydrates. Although you have to realize even a fairly strict diet for somebody with diabetes isn't very low carbohydrate. Most people um, sh uh, should not be or do not have to be on a very low carbohydrate diet. But if you have an excess of carbohydrates in your diet, lowering the amount of carbohydrates can be helpful. But also lowering the glycemic index of the carbohydrates you're eating. Basically uh, changing the types of carbohydrates to carbohydrates that don't spike your sugars as much. For example, white bread spikes your sugar more than whole grain bread. Uh, and there are other examples of that. So if you're having a lot of high glycemic index carbs, let's say a lot of white bread, if you shift that over more towards whole grains, that'll tend to knock down these spikes uh, also, of course, there are certain medications that can go after the spikes. Some of the pills include the drug Starlex and the drug Prandin. These medications certainly will uh, tend to lower the after meal spikes. Starlex, in particular, by helping the body give a good kick of insulin right after you eat a meal. It helps your own natural, these medicines help your own natural, your pancreas send out its own natural burst of insulin. And Bieta, which is a twice a day injectable, will also help the pancreas put out its own spike of insulin with each meal. So it can have an effect on the after meal spikes, uh, the after meal highs pretty directly. And also, certain insulins may help the after meal spikes, particularly the very rapid acting insulins, Umalog, Novolog, Apidra, 
which are all fairly comparable to each other. They're all pretty similar. And these medications, these insulins, may be given before every meal, or sometimes just a shot before the largest meal, like dinner for many people is the largest meal. So a shot of one of these before meals, before the biggest meal, may blunt out this spike, and it may help lower the hemoglobin A1C. Or they're mixed insulins that include some of these, and those sometimes when given before meals um, may have a similar effect, or at least part of their effect would be to help knock down the after meal spikes. So as an example of what may be done or sometimes done, now of course these medications when they're used, they're often used in combination with other medications, and some of these other medications may go after the background sugars, while some of these strategies simultaneously go after the meal sugars, or some of these medications may, medications or treatments may, use, may be used alone. It depends on what uh, your doctor or clinician uh, decides to do. It's very, very person-specific. So let's say we have someone who has a hemoglobin A1C Let's call it 7.4%. We're trying to get this, let's say, in this person at least below 7. And you have the breakfast spike, lunch spike, dinner spike. And, you know, so there are a number of strategies. We could have a person cut down the glycemic index of their carbohydrates with each meal. We could have them lower the amount of their carbohydrates with each meal. We could add on the drug Starlex or Prandin. Starlex, Starlex. Starlex or Prandin. To knock down these spikes. Or a twice a day injection of Bieta, like Bieta here and Bieta here. Or adding on a shot of um, insulin before the biggest meal, like Humalog, or before every meal, Humalog, 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 for example. And again, going after these after-meal spikes, the hemoglobin A1C is in this pretty good but not perfect range. It's below 8. In this range, the most effective strategy for knocking down the hemoglobin A1C may be going after the after-meal spikes. So using some of these postprandial uh, attack strategies uh, might be the most effective way to knock that hemoglobin A1C down further. And again, it's very, very person-specific and case-specific.